Hi, um, today we're going to be talking about FSHM 3012 and 3013. Um, this is a, an, a, an example of a presentation, a very basic version. Re today I'm referencing assessment 2 from FSHM 3013, so we can get a bit of an idea of how that works. This is outfit 1, um, part of my collection of autumn days. Um, it's the outfit itself is called Blown Leaves. On, the, on the, the board behind, I've put some pictures and some images that relate directly to the garment itself. And in my range board next to me, I have some pictures to show you how it meets up into the collection. So a bit of an idea of how it works back with all the other pieces. In this outfit is a strapless bodice that has an exposed zip at the back. Exposed zip at the back is one of my special features that I'll put into this garment. It also has um, a skirt, a, a fitted skirt with a drape mock wrap on it. Um, and the, the fabrics that I've used are 100% cotton poplin printed and a poly viscose dobby, dobby weave. Um, it's quite an open weave for this skirt um, and both pieces are fully lined. The special features, once again, that I've used is that exposed zip in my bodice because it has that, that theme running through most of my pieces in my collection. Um, and bound seams. On the inside of the construction of both garments, I've got bound seams. I'm using that as a special feature because I've printed up some fabric that matches back with my colourway, matches back with my print, um, because I think my customer will like that. She'll like that when it's hanging on the rack. She'll like that when, um, as enough, just as a special feature that makes her feel special. How this relates to my brand, my brand um, is Dressy Daywear. So it's a medium price point. Um, both of these pieces fit into that medium price point um, and they can be worn to places like the races, for instance. So it's a great Dressy Daywear outfit. Depending on where you work, you can stick a shirt underneath this strapless bodice and you can then rewear it um, but up to, up to work any day you want. Processes, and talking about my processes and how I went with this, um, strengths and weaknesses, what worked, what didn't work. Um, for me, um, the bodice was excellent. Really stable fabric, really easy to work with, so that was ace. Um, and the skirt itself though, um, when I found that it's quite a loose weave, it had quite a lot of movement in it. So when I was cutting it, um, it was hard to cut, I had to make sure that it was sitting on grain, I had to pin it really carefully when I was cutting it out. And when I was sewing it together, it had a lot of stretch um, in, in those seams and it frayed a lot. So I had to be really careful to make sure my notches were cut, make sure I pinned all of my seams to match them really carefully um, and be really, as I was stitching it, not stretching those seams. Because I've got a bias seam through here on both um, as I was um, planning it and piecing it together, you will notice that there's a little bit of a different shadow. This has a bit more sheen in it. This guy is a bit darker. Because of the way the grains matched back to each other, I had to be really careful. I did do a bit of experimentation. This was the third drape over drape that I put on this skirt. Um, the first one, the colourways, they matched better and they were, the tones were the same. There wasn't a shadow, but the drape didn't look as good. So then I recut it put it on a different grain and then went back in again and um, stitched it up. A different grain still didn't work so I tried the third time, cut it out on a different grain again and this is what I like the best. So of the three options I went with this one, I like the drape and how it sits best on this, on this one. The other thing I found with the over drape as it was sitting, see how it's curling out? So I had to really make sure my seams and my finishes what was my finish on the inside? If this was going to curl back and I was going to see the underlayer, um, I had to make sure it was double rolled. Because in the beginning, when I was thinking about just doing an overlock and a stitch hem on it, I, and when it rolled back, I, I saw the overlocking and I wasn't so happy. My customer would not be happy with that. She's a mid-price point. She likes the way she looks and presents, so she wouldn't be happy with that either. So I just had to change it all to a double roll hem um, to, yeah, to resolve that issue, which was, yeah. Great, great idea, really happy with the outcome. Um, on the rack behind me, I have all my accessible pieces that I had to hand up. So part of this assessment two for 3013 was a master and a final pattern, twelves, 
spec sheets, which is a cover page and a make page for every single garment. Um, and my garment bag, and everything hung, was hung on the coat hanger, put in one garment bag, um, and submitted on the rack for assessment.